I'm hoping that the fact that I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning will make it to where this video isn't a freaking rumble of words and a mess because I just don't want to deal with that right now. First time my camera's like ever been straight. Oh, it's beautiful. Hi everybody, it's me, Maddie, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Maddie, and I post videos every Monday. I don't have an intro. I usually say, hi, my name is Maddie, and then I don't know what I say after that, because I, every time I do that, I've been repeating the Raging Gamers YouTube channel's intro, and that's not what this video is. It's a booktube video, not a gaming video. Whatever. Moving on. I just want to say that before we get into this, I hit 300 subscribers today, and I would like to thank you all so much. 303, actually. You know, be specific. Uh, but I'd like to thank you all so very much for uh, subscribing to me, and I hope you guys continue to enjoy my content. I have so much fun doing it, even though I get annoyed at myself sometimes. And by sometimes, I mean a lot of times. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for 303 subscribers, and um, if you have any video suggestions you'd like to see, comment them down below. I've had three suggestions so far, and I've done all three of those videos, so there we go. Alright, now, I read 11 books, I think, during the expanse of September and October. I read six books in October. I don't know either, guys. Like, I don't know what happened, but, like, I thought at the beginning of this month I was, like, gonna read, like, two books. And then I came back and I pulled out six. I, I'm blown away. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna start talking about these books because I have a lot to talk about. And the first time I filmed this, I spent 20 minutes talking about September's books, and I hadn't even gotten to October yet. So, without further ado, I'm gonna shut up and start talking about the books I read in September. Okay, so the first book I finished in September, I almost said October, was Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This was a reread for me. I read this for the first time early last year, like in March. I was in Florida. I missed my second home. My first home, actually. I wish I lived in Florida. Anyway, I reread this just this year, and my original rating was a 4.5, and I gave it a 5 out of 5 on my second time. But I knew going in that I was going to give it a higher rating than the first time I read it, because I was rereading Nevermore. And for some reason, the first time I read Nevermore, I enjoyed it more than my reread of it. And I enjoyed this book more on the reread than the first time I read it. I don't really know, but yeah, my granny read this with me and she gave it 5 out of 5 too. Basically, this was in preparation of Hollow Pox, which I get tomorrow. I should get it, fingers crossed, tomorrow uh, as, uh, as I'm filming this because uh, it comes out tomorrow and I'm very, very excited. I wasn't excited for it um, like at all and then I reread this and now I can't freaking wait for the book. Anyway, this, uh, the first book, Nevermore, is about a girl named Morgan who was cursed to die on her 11th birthday, but on her 11th birthday before she can be murdered, she is taken to the land of Nevermore by a man named Jupiter North, and there she's going to have to compete in these trials that keep her place and become a member of the Wondrous Society. This is the sequel, and I think it picks up a few weeks after the first book ends. I think... Yeah, I think. Not too sure, but I think. I love the Nevermore series, so uh, not surprised if they give that 5 out of 5. Alright, so the next book I read was The Serpent's Secret by Santani Dasgupta. Probably mispronounced her name, and I apologize. But this is the first book in the Kiran Mala and the Kingdom Beyond series. And I don't give, I don't do five star predictions anymore because it takes a lot to get a five star out of me. But I filmed the five star prediction video a few days ago, so. Mm. Uh, but this was a book that I thought I was gonna give five out of five. It just sounds so amazing. The reason I what I saw was this back line right here, and it says, "Meet Kieran Mala, international demon slayer." Only she doesn't know it yet, and I was instantly like, "Oh my gosh, this sounds freaking amazing!" So I went into this with very high hopes, five out of five star expectations. I gave it a four, 
my granny gave it a 4, and here is why. I don't like the way this is written. Uh, Kieran, who is Kieran Mala, Kieran is the main character, and she is telling the readers the story. So it's told, in her point of view, past tense. And I don't like the main character, Kieran. She is so annoying for some reason. I don't know what it is. I just don't like her. So the fact that I have to read an entire book told to me from her made me so mad. And... It was kind of cliche, and then it was really slow. Like, like the first like 75 pages, I was so bored. I was like, I gotta force myself to read this, don't I? I was like, I know I gotta. So I forced myself to read the first 75 pages, and then it kind of picked up, and then it dragged, and then it picked up, and then it dragged, and then the ending was so stupid. The ending was ridiculous. I do. <laughs> It's so dumb, and I, it's, it makes me mad thinking about it because I still remember all that happened at the end. It was just way too much, and because the author was like trying to throw in plot twists there at the last second because there wasn't really any plot twist within the story. Uh, so she was trying to throw in some plot twists, and I was like, too much, too much. You're doing too much, okay? You're bringing back this guy and these guys, okay? Uh, try not to give spoilers, so this guy and these guys. Uh, you're also bringing back somebody else's mother, okay? And then you have a baby. There's a baby in here, and that was just, no. Too much, okay? And I don't even know what happened at the end, because like I said, they're trying to do way too much. They, she's trying to do way too much during this uh, book. It's just, oh my god, it's getting my blood boiling while I'm reading it. And it wasn't like enjoyable too much. I was like, just end the book. It was, it was over 20 pages ago, honey. Just stop it. So yeah, there is my opinions on that. You know, you'd think it'd be a three, but I gave it a four, and I had no plans on reading the sequel until the end when Neil and Kieran were talking. I was like, oh crap. Oh crap. I want to see what happens with their relationship. Uh, so that would be like the only reason I picked up the next book, but I'm not going to because I don't like the main character, and I just didn't like this book. So I'm good, but... It was okay. Uh, what's this about? Oh god, I went on a rant and even tell you what it's about. This is about Kieran, who on her 12th birthday goes to school and she comes back home to find her parents have disappeared and they left her a note, but they, she also finds a rakosh in her kitchen, which is like this demon. And then two boys, Neil and Lal, um, knock on her front door and sweep her off into the kingdom beyond. And there she's got to try and get her parents back. Chaos ensues. There we go. Okay, so the next book I read is the sequel to one of my favorite books of the year, The Phoenix House by C.K. Miller. You've literally heard me talk about it. If you popped into, like, any of my videos, I just find a way to shove it into any video without context. I'm like, you know, this book was good, but you know what was better? The Phoenix House. Uh, but I read the sequel to that, finally, and that is The Leviathan Prince by C.K. Miller. And I give this 3 out of 5. I feel very sad about it. I hated the fact that I gave a 3 out of 5 star um, because C.K. Miller is such a nice person. At least that's how she presents herself. I mean, you never know. You never know. But she seems like such a sweet person and I felt so bad rating this 3 out of 5. Um, but uh, I didn't enjoy this book that much. I loved the first book, but this book just felt like something was lacking, and I really don't know how to explain it without giving away spoilers, which I'm not going to do. I think I did a very good job in my review for this book, so I'll leave that link down below if you want to go read my Goodreads review. It's spoiler-free, so yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I gave this 3 out of 5. It just didn't feel as if it was in the same world as the first book. The characters didn't feel the same. I was very bored throughout a majority of this book. I found a few inconsistencies. And I think the main thing that drags this book down is the fact that it's just filled with traveling. And the first book is a traveling book because segue to what these, this book is about, the series is about. The first book follows Kia, who is a knight for her kingdom, I think. I really don't know what she's a knight for, but she is a knight, okay? Um, and basically, she ends up getting a job to transport a noblewoman across the sea to the king's coronation, or the prince's coronation. And while they're on aboard the ship, 
somebody gets murdered. I think it's two somebodies. And then when they get to where the prince is being coordinated, the current king is murdered and Kia is framed for his murder, okay? I'm horrible at talking about this book. Every time I talk about this book, I either pull something out or I, and I add something in, or I add something in that's like not important at all. But this is a sequel to that book. And there were parts of this book I liked. Um, I liked the mind communication between Kia and Akan. I'm not gonna say much about that because I almost spoil it, but like I liked that even though they didn't feel like the same characters. And I also liked Round Table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say because I don't want to spoil this, but I freaking loved that scene. I loved it so much. It was like my favorite scene of the entire book, and it was just. It was so gorgeous. <laughs> I really hope she kept it in the new version because the author, C.K. Miller, has gone through and reworked the first two books in the series and, like, edited them and rewritten them, I think. Um, I don't really know for sure. Uh, so I really hope she kept that scene because it was amazing. Anyway, okay, so I need to stop. I need to cut myself off because I am... I'm hitting my water, but I am rambling, so I'm going to cut myself off. Three out of five stars. Would definitely recommend the first book, especially because she is redoing these books. Uh, and that's that. That's all I have to say. So, alright, moving on. I need to move on. I talk way too long on these books. It's ridiculous. So that's all I read in September. Three books. I didn't read much in September, but... Let's start off with October. We started off with the bang, and we I read Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. I read this in October. I finally did it. I bit the bullet and whoop, loved it so much. I gave this five out of five stars. It was freaking amazing. I get it, y'all. I get why you love this because this is amazing. This is just it is a piece of fried, no, fried, ew. It's a piece of perfectly cooked hot salmon. Even though Percy, I don't think he'd ever eat salmon because it's kind of like part of his blood. But it was so good. Mm. If you don't know what Percy Jackson is about, what rock have you been living under? Because, like, I'm about to come over and, like, pull you out from under it. But this is about Percy who finds out that he's a half-human, half-god. And he has to go to camp half-blood, because uh, people are, monsters are trying to murder him. Uh, and then he's on the run. I'm not doing this, like, I'm not doing this justice at all, guys. It is so freaking good. You are all right. I mean, like, I love this. Like, I didn't want to put it down. I could have read this in one day had I not been reading this with my granny. If you don't already know, I gave this a 5 out of 5. And my granny gave it a 4 out of 5. No, a 4.5. What'd you give it? Sorry about that. My memory card was full. Uh, but my granny gave this book a... 4. She gave it a 4. Okay. No point five, Just a 4. But I loved this a lot more than my granny did. I mean, one star more. But this was so perfect. And I'm kind of thrown off my game because I had to go and uh, delete some videos off my memory card. But I just want to say, if you haven't read this yet, you got to read it. I mean, people, when they say that this book is amazing and you just roll your eyes, like, everybody says it's amazing. Well, it is amazing. So it deserves that, okay? It's just Oh my god. I'm gonna try and keep this one short because the last time I talked about this book, I went on for over 10 minutes ranting about it. Trying not to give spoilers with my rant. Do you know how hard it is to not spoil a 200 page book during a rant? It's hard, okay? But the book I'm talking about is The Cup and the Prince by De Liado, if I pronounced your last name correctly, that is. I gave this 3 out of 5 star. I got an archivist off of NetGalley. Is it really worth a 3 star? I don't know, because there's a lot wrong with this book. So, 
This is about Zoya, who finds out that her boyfriend cheated on her, and then she drugs him and steals his permission slip to enter the Royal Games. I do not think they're called the Royal Games, I just can't remember. I forgot a lot about this book, except for my deep rage with it, okay? Wow, I'm just ranting about a lot of these books this month. It's a three star, it's not horrible, right? But Zoya then enters the Royal Games, and then proceeds to cheat her way through them. I hate the main character. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't, what is up with me not liking main characters these two months? I don't know. But I do not like Zoya. She's so annoying and she thinks that just because she got cheated on, she should, she should cheat and get into the games. And then not only that, to cheat on the final game? Uh-uh. That's where I draw the line, Zoya. You're stupid, first of all. Okay? There... There's... Okay. <laughs> Calm down, Madison. Calm down. Anyway, when Zoya gets to the games, she finds out that there's one prince who wants her out of the games and one prince who wants to help her. These two princes are kind of not even important, okay? Uh, the plot twist at the end of the story... Oh my god, as somebody who loves plot twists, uh, it sucked, alright? And then there's also somebody trying to kill her. And when I say there's somebody trying to kill her, I mean she's walking down a dark hall and an assassin attacks her and she just hits the sword away and then he runs away. And I'm like, he's an assassin. An assassin, okay? He should know how to fight. <laughs> I like assassins. I have a love in my heart for assassins. I can't kill anybody, so I could never be an assassin, but I love reading about assassins, okay? So, I was like, ah, this chapter is titled Assassin. I'm excited. I was deeply disappointed, and I, yeah. And then the love in this book. Oh my goodness, don't even get me started. Is this supposed to be like a haters to lovers? Because I'm sorry, but this author tried to get the haters to lovers in one book. Mind you, not even 250 pages long. And she had to have the characters meet, hate each other, become friends, or have a dislike for each other, then become acquaintances and friends, and then become lovers. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You bit off more than you can chew, okay? Like, that's, no. There was no chemistry between them. It was just like, she wanted to put a romance in there, and so she just named a, a male character, and was like, he's got a tragic backstory. He's a love interest. And I'm like, whoa, no, 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 no. You can't, you assassin, okay? First of all, the assassin. Whew. And then the love? No. No, I don't see it. <sighs> Sorry, it's been five minutes. I need to calm down. Move on. I've read it. I did a very bad net galley review because I was trying not to spoil anything. Uh, but let's just move on. Would I recommend this book? No. I am sorry. I know I'm like an ARC reader. Maybe I'm supposed to recommend this book. I wouldn't recommend this book. Give me some recommendations with the great assassins in them because I want books with murder and gore and death, which I did get in October. So let's continue on. Well, I didn't get it in this next book, but anyways. The next book I ended up reading was Ozland by Wendy Spinelli, and if you've been uh, trucking along with me, then you know that my granny and I have been binging this trilogy. I loved the first book, I gave it four out of five. The second book, I gave two, and this book, I gave a two as well. I don't like this book. Basically, I think Wendy went in with, into this like, this is the last book, there needs to be stakes, so let's kill everybody. And I'm like, um. No, I think you read what a stake in a book was, because it's not that. She doesn't kill everybody, okay? But it was so pointless, okay? Like, my granny gave it four, in case you wanted to know, but I gave it two. I just, I don't know what it was, but after the first book, I was kind of done. There is like an insta-love in every book, 
and I think this story had the insta love in the last chapter, which by the way, it doesn't have a chapter number. Yeah, um, mm -mm. Uh -uh. Ugh, ugh. Uh, and I don't it was it was messy, okay? I was like, what are you doing? Why is, what is happening? Because, like, something would happen, and then something would happen right after that that made the first thing so infutile. I was like, just stop, calm down. I'm like, what are you doing? I don't know. I think Wendy wanted to go out with a bang, but then she shot her own foot, and it, she, she tripped down the stairs, and she got, she broke her nose. So, anyway, let's talk about a book I did like, and that is My Dear Friends. You surprised? A Kiss in the Dark by Gina Sioka. I don't know what happened, okay? I also don't know where the dust jacket is, but that's fine because I hate the dust jacket. Basically, I got this book for like a punishment prompt in my TBR game called The Life of TBR, and it wasn't a punishment. I read this over the weekend. It was amazing. It was great. Basically, this follows a girl named Marcy. I think her name is Marcy, but she goes by Mars. And she it follows two timelines, the junior timeline and the senior timeline. And basically, in the senior year, during a football game, uh, the lights go out and then she gets a kiss. And um, just gets kissed by nobody. And so the entire the entire senior plot point is trying to figure out who kissed her. But it was so obvious once you read the junior timeline. And the junior timeline is basically going back and you're trying to figure out what happened during junior uh, homecoming. Because something happened as referenced in the senior year. And I was just captivated. I couldn't put it down, okay? There are flaws with this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the author just like had a hat full of like diversity prompts and she just pulled them out whenever she needed them and she was like, aha, Asian character, wah, aha, gay, wah, bye, like, haha, half something of like an Indian descent, wah, uh, and I was like, whoa, okay, just all of them, I, what's up with me and whoa, I don't know, but like she had a lot of diversity in this book. I had too much, in my opinion, I think she had too much diversity that it felt like she just added it to have diversity. I don't know, but if you've read this, did you feel the same way? I don't know who has read this book. I, my, I know I'm not the only one, but I'm just saying, I don't know who read this book. But it just felt like too much diversity to be genuine. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and I think if you've read this, you might feel it, because she would just throw this stuff in, okay? She would just throw it in out of nowhere. Like, there was a scene at the old mill, and it just threw in with the, with Mars saying, yeah, this character's half, or like one-fourth some type of, like, Indian tribe descent. And I was like, why did I need to know that? Like, what? I was like, what? I don't know. It just didn't feel genuine. One fourth, I don't know. Anyway, from his great great, yeah, it, got, it was a little ridiculous. It was a little ridiculous if you ask me. Um, but basically, I really, really liked this. I did guess who kissed her basically as soon as he was on the page. I was like, oh, it's you, it's you. Uh, I did like uh, the character's best friend, who I forgot she is. Oh, no, what is her name? JD! So I really liked JD. I thought she was fun and she was really supportive and um, I don't know. Everything, like the catalysts, no, whatever it was, happened during homecoming. I feel like I didn't do a very good job. I kind of went off in a rant with the, the diversity. Um, the end plot twist between not the boy who kissed her, but some other people. I was I was surprised by that. I was like, oh, I don't even predict that. So that was fun. But, yeah. So, I did like this. I don't really have any interest in other Gina Sioka books. This is kind of like a one-off, I guess. But I did end up enjoying it, which kind of means it didn't fit the prompt. But that's okay, because I liked it, and that's... That's all that mattered. All right, and then my granny and I read The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cal. I gave it a 3 out of 5, and my granny gave it a 3 out of 5 as well. Or did she give it a 3.5? Dudes, I don't know. She gave it a 3.5. And she said that she liked the book up until the end. Because the end got a little cuckoo. I liked this book 
it was just like it was I kind of had to sit down and force myself I read it fairly quickly which makes sense because it's kind of got like large font and then there's pictures which by the way the pictures they they ain't they ain't it um but just the ending kind of got a little ridiculous and I lo I didn't like Zar as a main character I did predict what happened with Wish but I didn't like Zar because he didn't learn anything a spoiler sorry he didn't learn anything and I really didn't like him because he's He's the bit, he's the kid in the middle grade, so there's got to be a lesson, but then the lesson, just he never learned it. I was like, oh, God. I have to, If I'm going to read the next book, I have to put up with this annoying kid. So, yeah, this is about Zar, who is a wizard boy, but he has no magic. And it also follows Wish, who is a child of the warrior queen. The warrior queen, yes. All right, I completely messed up. I was talking about the book, but then every time I meant to say Zar, I said Wish. So I'm just going to re-say it. Basically, Zar goes out in the woods one night to try and capture a witch to steal their magic. And they end up bumping into Wish, who has escaped the warrior fort to go and a see the surrounding woods. Basically, they end up going to Zar's house and a witch follows them home, and because of that, they need to try and break back into the warrior forts to try and return this magical object that Wish broke out along with her. And you're like, wow, that doesn't seem like a very big plot for a book that's kind of big, you know? Yeah, you'd be right. I felt like this book kind of dragged at a lot of points, but also... I also didn't like the main character, so I feel like that's, yeah. I did like Squeegee, Squeegee, Squeegees. I liked him. He was cute. But, like, who doesn't like him? You know what I mean? Okay, so the next book I ended up reading in October was A Tale of Magic by Chris Colfer. This book I gave 4 to 5, and my granny gave us 4 to 5 as well. This book is amazing, and I loved it so much. The reason it didn't give a, get a full 5 for me, because I really thought I was going to give it a full 5, was just because sometimes I get a little bored. The ending was pretty basic for a middle grade book, and it took a little bit for me to get into and interested in Chris's writing style. So... Chris, way too formal, and Colfer's writing style, and I kind of had to get used to the way the story was told, but I really, really love this book. Trigger warnings, though, for suicidal thoughts, abuse, and homophobia, kind of. I don't know for sure if it is homophobia, but I wanted to make sure you guys know, just in case you want to pick this book up. But, yes, I love this book. This follows our main character, Bristol, who is a girl in the Southern Kingdom, and she has to do, has to do basic girly things. She goes to school for how to be a girl, you know, how to put makeup on, how to be a perfect mother, st stuff like that. But she finds a secret library, and when this happened, I was, it was just a secret tunnel, a secret tunnel running in my head over and over again. But basically, she finds this book, she finds this secret library, and in there are, are banned books, because they're banned because they tell the truth about Bristol's kingdom. And she's absolutely fascinated by these. But she finds a book called A Tale of Badge, or The Tale. I don't remember what way... The, if it's an A or the I don't remember the article. Anyway, she finds this book and she ends up finding out that she has magical powers. People stumble upon her, and uh, not only is she a girl who's reading, which is illegal, she also has magic, which is constituted for death. She's then uh, put on trial, and right before she is, her life is decided forever, kind of, kind of. That's anyway. A woman named Mrs. or Miss Weatherby comes up and takes Bristol to her beautiful magical school. And this is the entire reason why I originally got the book, is because this stunning, stunning naked hardback. Uh, but I loved it so much. And it's so amazing, and I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. So I do want to read uh, other Chris Colfer books from the Land of the Stories, so... There we go. Four out of four. Oh my god, this video is going to be so long. All right, speed this up. Quick time. Here we go, but it's not going to be quick. Okay. Uh, I finished this day as a film in it. From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This book I gave four to five. This is going. In, this is in a upcoming five-star predictions video. Uh, sorry, spoiler. 
and then you give me five stars. Uh, but that's going to come up like in late November, early December. I don't really know for sure. But yes, it's been filmed and edited already. But basically, this book I heard nothing but amazing things about. And I was kind of disappointed. Basically, the first half of this basically... Oh my god, I just keep reusing the same words over and over again. Anyways, the first half of this book I was really, really bored with. I was reading 136 pages a day for two days, okay? And then I passed the midpoint. And oh my gosh, did it get good, okay? We got murder, we got gore, we got death of characters I love and they did not need to die. But we got murderous people. We got revenge. And I was just, I was in my happy place, okay? Because there was so much murder and hacking people's limbs off. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Anyway, I liked this book at the end. I give it four to five just because Honestly, I should have given it a three, but I liked the back half. I wasn't surprised with anything at the end, you know? I, I predicted the thing with the with the vampires. I did not know this was a vampire book, okay? The thing is, it's kind of, it's a supernatural book. I did not know that going into it. I was very surprised to find out there were vampires. Um, but I predicted the whole ending with the vampires. I predicted the thing at the end with Poppy, uh, kind of, wasn't, like, I predicted it, like, with, like, a hundred pages until we found out, but I predicted the vampire thing, uh, the vampire thing, uh, since basically the first time we, the second time we saw that thing on the page, alright, and every time Hawk was on the page, I was smiling like a dumb little idiot, because he's just so charismatic and fun, and I really, really liked re like him when he was on the page, and I hope that in the next book, because I do plan on reading the sequel, we get to see, like, the story in his point of view, like, we get to hear Hawk's point of view of the story. I hope that makes sense. I would really like to see that, because I loved, every time Hawk was on the page, I was like, Yes, yeah, like you, smooth talker, one on one, just really, really, really great. Oh my god, this is about, <laughs> this is about Poppy who is a maiden, which means that she has to hide her face, like nobody can talk to her, she can't like talk to anybody else, and then she ends up getting a guard named Hawk, who she becomes very close with, and basically, this person is out to murder her, and there are these things called... I don't know how to describe this book, except if I read the back from you. But this back, I fall asleep every time I read the back. This is just... It, for fans of Sarah J. Mass, okay? I think that's like the perfect description, you know? You read Sarah J. Mass, you know what Sarah J. May is, so like, then yeah. There we go. Here we go, here we go. Final book. Oof! Oh, I kind of already spoiled it. Final book, whew, I'm trying to speed run this, was Sea of Monsters, the second book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I gave this three. My granny gave it three. That was that. I finished it today. I finished this today, too. Uh, but I didn't like this as much as I enjoyed the first book. And somebody who I follow on Goodreads, Dragono. I don't even know how to pronounce her name. Anyway, she said that this was her least favorite book in the series. So, I have high hopes that the next book's gonna be better. Um, but I just... This, I had to force myself to read this. So when they were at the camp, I was actually really enjoying it. But as soon as they left to go on the quest, I was, I was bored. I had to sit down and I had to physically force myself to read this. Which, you can imagine, was very difficult because I was reading this book and I, it was getting good when this was getting bad. So, <laughs> there we go. Um, but yeah, I give it 3 out of 5. I love Tyson so much and I love Percy and Tyson's uh, interaction in this book. Tyson is a sweet little bean. I hope I get to see more of him. I haven't read the third book or the fourth book or the fifth book, so no spoilers, okay? I do hope I get to see more of Tyson in the next book because I love him and Percy's relationship. I, if I'm remembering correctly, in the movie, Percy is a giant butthole to Tyson, and so I was really glad to see that in this book, he's not. He's a little embarrassed of him, but, like, he, they're so sweet, and I love them. Um, and... 
yeah, I don't have much to say. I like Annabeth and Percy's relationship as well. I like how they're growing, but I'm pretty sure everybody does. My opinions, I think, are pretty basic on this book. Alright, I'm excited to read the third one, but I haven't gotten there yet. There we go! That's my stack. Okay. Um, I'm going to start doing monthly wrap-ups. <laughs> 2021 comes, I'm going to do monthly wrap-ups because this is freaking ridiculous. I just can't stop talking about books, especially the ones that make me mad. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm sorry that it was really, really long. If you're new to my channel, most of my videos are kind of longer than they should be. I just can't stop talking. Uh, even because it's my introverted self who's talking to nobody. I fake film these all the time. And they sound good. But as soon as the camera turns on, it's like, you can't talk. You, you, you can't talk, but you also can't stop talking. That's how it is. But I fake film these all the time. I'll finish a book and I'm like, so, here's my opinions on this book. Alright. Anyway, I'm going to go. I love you all so very much. Thank you so much for watching this video. If, like I said, if you have any other suggestions, please comment them down below. Because... I would love to just have some suggestions. And, um, yeah. What was your favorite book you read in October? My favorite book was The Lightning Thief, for sure. And I also really liked The Tale of Magic, so there we go. I'd like to hear your favorite books you read in October, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye, everybody, and hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, everyone.